Stan 2, MechWarriors, and welcome back to another episode of Battletech as we continue the campaigns of Voodoo's Marauders. And we join ourselves not in transit, not waiting on a mission screen, but sitting here at the Argo because something has come to my attention. Something I've been thinking about for the past couple of episodes, actually. We have a whole bunch of new crew members on board, and we have gone through story missions, which tells me it's time to catch up with the crew. I've been kind of putting this off because I'm not quite sure how you guys prefer watching the crew episodes compared to just the shorter mission-only episodes. So uh, we are probably going to have to spend quite a bit of time talking to everybody and going through all our funny accents. If that's not your cup of tea, I will try and put a comment down below that jumps right into the action. But uh, we already know what we're going to be doing. Uh, we will be taking the contract down here uh, for Intelligence Agent. It'll be a real simple, easy thing to, uh, easy thing to do. It's uh, not going to pay a whole heck of a lot, but it'll be an easy mission. So before we do in that, let's uh, make sure that we talk to everybody. You got questions? Yes, I, I do. Commander McAllister, sorry about what happened to Weldry and Siraju and all. If only we'd known, we'd have invaded the Directorate myself to get him back. But now it's too late. You said that you knew Mastiff, that you fought by his side. I did have that privilege, yeah. I didn't know him quite as well as you did, of course. But we were together in the trenches of the Fjalda campaign, and I raised a glass with Siraju in the canteen on more than one occasion. What did you think of the old man? What jumps into your mind? Family. The old man was so damn proud of his family and heritage. There wasn't a drop of noble privilege in his veins. But the name Montgomery but the Montgomery name carried weight. Hard as nails since the dawn of time, his father used to tell him. Those were his family words and personal creed. I can personally attest to their accuracy. When we were fighting alongside the Royal Guard on Fijalder campaign, a pirate driven hunchback managed to flank us. Decker was piloting a locust at the time, and the bastard took his leg clean off. The locust went down hard. Decker blacked out. He was a dead man. There was nothing we could do to keep that hunchback from putting a foot through his cockpit. And it would have, if Mastiff hadn't come along charging in with his centurion. With his first punch, he took the hunchback's main gun to clean off. There was a totally matter-of-fact way about it. It wasn't a desperate swing or a panic move. He just calmly put his, face in his fist into the pirate mech's weapon pod, grabbed it, and wrenched it free of its moorings. It was like, I don't know, watching a farmer uproot a tree stump. You know, workmanlike. And all the while, we could hear the pirate over an open channel screaming and cursing as he desperately tried to fight back. The old man took the hunchback apart piece by piece. Imagine a veteran prize fighter locked in a cage with a snot-nosed kid with no rules or referees in sight. He put on a clinic for everybody to see. The rest of the pirates broke and ran, broke and ran when they saw what happened to their friend. I can't say I blame them in their place. I would have done the same. And that's what the Montgomery's were. Warriors for as long as anyone could remember. Born to the fight and tempered on the battlefield, and Sir Raju was the last. He never had any children, you know. The Montgomery line died with him. He ever show you that enormous knife he used to carry? The Kirky? Yeah, don't see many of those outside the Free World Leagues. These days, Kirky blades are mostly associated with the fourth regular Hussars. Not massive, though. He claimed that he inherited the cur bla curved blade beauty from his grandfather, who inherited it from his grandfather, and so on and so on, all the way back to his family's origins right on Terra. During the Fjalder campaign, I saw him use that blade against a pirate twice his size, split the bastard's skull like a rotten cantaloupe. It was horrifying and beautiful all at once. You don't see that kind of skill every day. I wonder what happened to that old blade of his. He wasn't with him on Weldry. The old man must have felt like he'd lost a piece of himself when the director had took it away. Thanks for the talk. Next time we're on Shirley, let's raise a glass to the old man's memory. Yeah, I'd like that. So I think would he. Got a few minutes to chat. I'd like to catch up. Uh, we've already talked about everything, so we are good. And we already know everything about running this company. You know where to find me. Yes, I do, Darius, and we will keep that in mind. Let's talk to Alexander, oh, one of our new members. Commander, welcome to my corner of the command center. From here, you can provide Mr. Oliveira with advice and information whenever he needs it. I want to be a resource to, for you as well. In keeping with my role in the Restoration Liaison, I will give you whatever additional information I can about our campaign moving forward. Come see me after any major operation and I'll share what I can. I like to discuss the state of the war against the Directorate. Things are going well enough, Commander. Our initial attack on Weldry was an enormous success, despite the psychological costs of what we discovered there. Still, the Directorate's atrocities have steeled our resolve. I've never seen Lady Arano so determined. Out of curiosity, Commander, what did you think of her speech? I recorded it, you know. Broadcasts are underway to every corner of the Directorate space. It was good. 
she said what she people wanted to hear. You think they bought it? It's not raw from the heart. Mastiff would have been proud. What you're saying is that you turned her speech into a PR stunt. Nah, we're, we're too genuine for that one. Good, that's what I was hoping to hear. The presumption of authenticity will carry us far. For what it's worth, Lady Arano meant every word that she said, but the people may not see it that way. Espinosa's propaganda machine will do everything in its power to tarnish our accomplishments and drag us through the dirt. I can imagine the headlines now. Police and civil servants cut down by weapons of war. Dangerous convicts set, set loose by a traitor, endangering nobles and commoners alike. A dangerous narrative, and one that we'll have to counter at every turn. With luck, maybe our people will believe what they've heard from our broadcast over the directorate's propaganda. But I fear that Espinosa's hardline supporters will be far less eager to listen. If we fail to turn them against the directorate, we run the risk of ongoing violence, even after we liberate the home systems. That's why messages like Kamea's speech are so important. Espinosa's supporters just saw the conditions on Weldridge with their own eyes. You, th you don't think that'll be enough to sway him? If the directorate is using propaganda, we need to get some of our own. Got it. Yeah, we're not that naive either. Sadly, yes. If we're going to win this war, we need to rally the Oregon people, including a percentage of Espinosa's supporters. They have to see that we're better than the directorate. Again and again, until our message is impossible to ignore. For you, that means military victories. For me, it means more broadcasts, spin, and outreach. Public opinion is just another battlefield, and I'll be knee-deep in the trenches until the day I die. So you're new to this group. Tell me about yourself. I'd be happy to, but honestly, Commander, I've been so consumed with the, ma consumed with the matters of war of late, I don't even know where to begin. Tell me about who you were before Kamea's exile and the Restoration. A noble scion, much the same as you are, from what I understand. As a fellow noble, I'm sure you already know more than what, more than most about my upbringing. It was a life of great privilege and even greater expectation. I spent my early years invested in academic pursuits, the study of history, mathematics, and statecraft. I strove to excel at every subject, anything to avoid disappointing my mother and father. The extent to which they would come to disappoint me is a cruel irony, but it's one that I've come to accept. What kind of expectations did you have to meet? It must have been hard to have your own parents betray you. It's already here, Lord Madeira. Let's talk about something else. Now I want to know more. My expectations. Do you know House Madeira's motto? Behold our splendor. I had a family obligation to live extravagantly, and so and to do so with the public eye. But I was also expected to develop my intellect. My life was a 50-50 split between carousing and academic study. In truth, it felt like I was leaving, living two lives and putting on a show for both. But I'll never complain about my upbringing. I have enjoyed the advantages that most children of the periphery could only dream of. It must have been hard to have your parents betray you. Oh, it is. Nothing could be harder. When Khmer retakes the throne, there will be a reckoning, and the Directorate's collaborators will be tried for their crimes. My mother and father will be at the front of that list. As terrible as it feels to say it, they'll deserve whatever punishment they receive. So I already hear that. Let's talk about something else. Your apologies are unnecessary by any met metric you care to mention. I've lived a charmed life. The hardships of the past three years don't erase the lifetime of privilege I've enjoyed before Espinosa's coup. It would be dishonest of me to pretend that they did. But still, I'm happy to change the subject if you wish. Tell me about Goldrum. What kind of world is it? A truly beautiful one. You should really travel there sometime after all this is over and see it for yourself. Imagine lush green lowlands giving away to mile upon mile of white sand coastline. Sandy beaches kissed by warm, salty seas, and a soft rain perfumed with saffron and car cardamom. And but not to mention the wildlife. Close your eyes and imagine it, Commander. Shield, ter shield turns wheeling and soaring, their brilliant plumage glittering in the sunlight. Leviathan sablefish flashing silver beneath the waves. Dolphinfish leaping, breaching the surface of the water in brightest streaks of yellow and green. Places like Goldra are special. They must be preserved. This is what we are fighting for. Something unspoiled and unique and ours. Something that reminds us how good the periphery can be. Let's talk about something else. Of course, uh, I should go. Always a pleasure. Commander. The standard commander, Shepard line. I should go. All right, Yang. Let's let's warm Need up my throat to get abused. Commander? Hey, Gun Boss. What's up? How you liking the new ship? Love it. She's a big old ship, Commander. This bug can carry more tonnage than I know what to do with. And the mech bay. Man, that mech bay. Do you have any idea how tough it is to refit a mech on a leopard? 
Other mech techs won't even try it. You got no room to maneuver, no room to do anything. The odds of getting someone killed in a horrific industrial accident go right through the roof. I guess what I'm trying to say is I like the new ship. And especially like the fact that it isn't my job to keep her flying anymore. I guess that puts Lady Arano in my good graces, which is rare for a wannabe empress. Lord Madeira too. Hell, even Centrella. As long as they keep us in the Argo, they'll be fine with me. Gotta uh, don't need that. No, we're good. He only had one thing to I'll say. I'll be here if you need anything. Ah, uh, Fera. What you need? Fera Murad. Commander McAllister, what can I do for you? I really don't know how to do this accent. Batching of the Argo must have been an enormous job. How'd you do it? Oh, it wasn't just me. I had a team working under me. Over 200 of Leitrin's most accomplished engineers, electricians, and shipwrights. It was pretty amazing, I've got to say. Shouting through a megaphone at a team of hundreds, watching them hang on my every word. How much did Lady, Madeira, Lady Arano pay for all of that? Oh, it wasn't Lady Arano. The payments came directly from the House Centrella. It was a figure of speech. They are indirect payments, of course, rooted through countless intermediaries to obscure where the money was coming from. But yeah, the Centrellos pay for it. Now as to how much the Centrellos paid, I honestly have no idea. I'm sure the figure was astronomical, but still, cheaper than getting dragged through an unwanted war, eh? If the ship turns out to be import as important as Lady Arano thinks it will, then it's money well spent. Ever managed a team this big before? Never in my wildest dreams. Prior to my time on the Lyrton shipyard, the biggest team I'd ever managed was a crew with me and on the Alexis. And they all got killed. This job was a lot better than the, that one did. This job went a lot better than that one did, by the way. Only three deaths across the entire project. Before you asked, none of them were my fault. It was an accident with one of the industrial cranes, and it was horrible. I paid for their souls. That went off the rails in a pretty big way, didn't it? Sorry about that. I guess I'm still a little bit in shock from our time on Axelus. I'm having a hard time getting what I saw of there out of my mind. But neither here nor there. We are talking about the ship, and that is something else you'd like to know. I have some questions for you about said ship. Yes, Commander. Of course. Ask me whatever you like. What can you tell me about the Argo? A fair amount, Commander. I've been researching this ship for several months. Boeing Interstellar produced two of these beauties back in 2762. They were intended to to follow behind the first wave of exploratory missions, supporting multiple surveyor, terraform, and colonizing teams on the survey missions. Although she's far too large to land on a planet, her docking color system allows for smaller dropships like your Leopard to come around for the ride. The Argo is a mobile space station in a sense, providing supply and temporary habitation for teams on dangerous missions in unsettled space. Exploration vessel or no, sounds like she's ideal for our purposes. She is, and with 57,000 tons of cargo space, she has all the room we need for supplies, spare parts, equipment, personnel, you name it. In fact, her hold is so vast we'll have no problem storing as many mechs, uh, chassis, and partial mech salvage as you can get your hands on. Why don't we see more ships like the Argo out here? The Argo is a, pro a product of her era. She lacks armor and maneuverability to function in a battle. She's vastly outclassed in size and firepower, even by the smallest warships. She's a peacetime ship, meant for peacetime exploration duties, and planned for a focus on long-term orbital deployment. It was a non-combat design that ultimately led to her abandonment. In an earlier era, she might have been wide seen widespread usage, but the fall of the Star League and the near constant state of war we've endured since then has rendered the Argo little more than a forgotten experimental footnote on the history of a dropship production. Sad, really. In her own way, the Argo represents the backseat that science and exploration have taken in the pursuit of military goals. Uh, we're going to skip a tutorial. There's no reason to drag you guys through that. So that is enough for now. If you don't want to be part of this crew, I want a better sense of who you are. Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm an actual doctor, but not the medical kind. I hold two doctorates, one in physics and the other in mechanical engineering. And now I'm hauling around lost in a lost tech wonder with a crew of merry pirates seeking my fortune. It's funny the place his life takes you. Okay, I've got the elevator pitch. Now give me the long version. Yeah, sure, if you like. Let's see where to begin. Well, I was born on Regulus in the Free Worlds League. My parents were academics, I know, big surprise. And I spent most of my early years bouncing back and forth between the suburban apartment and the Fedo Fedoski. My Baba June's live-in dropship. Your Baba June? Who's that? My grandfather. He carved out a nice little business for himself, running a taxi service for pilgrims traveling to and from Dar es Salaam. 
As much as my father found on Baba June's old-fashioned lifestyle and beliefs, he wasn't blind to how much I loved the old man. And so he occasionally consented to let me on board the Fedosi and go along for the ride. I will always cherish my memories of these voyages. The warmth behind Baba June's smile, the excitement of leaving regulars behind, chatting with the pilgrims and getting lost in the stars, and eating the pre-packaged Fezajan out of a shiny tin. Those were the times, all crystal clear tin in my memory, as if they happened yesterday. Oh, how I miss that wonderful man. This may seem a little silly coming from a mercenary engineer, but I've come to think of the life I've chosen as a way of honoring my Baba June. By carving my own path amongst the stars, I'm doing what I can to keep his memory alive. It sounds trite, sure, but sue me. It's what I've chosen to believe. What about after you left home? Where did you study? I actually spent a little time in the Leon Commonwealth before pursuing my studies. Long story, but suffice to say that it was my own kind of learning experience. When I did decide to get a higher education, I wound up in the Free World League. I did my undergrad studies at, at the University of University of Atreus, and went on to Xi'an University in the Capellan Confederation to earn my doctorates. For a top three, top three school with a Maka, wow, Maskarov, Maskarovka, with a Maskarova screened admissions process, Xi'an knew was surprisingly open to transfer students. Anyway, I could go on and on for hours about my academic career, and you'd probably smile and nod as I rambled, but come on, I mean this can't be interesting for you, can it? You're a mercenary. You stomp around in giant robot for a living. The closest I got to adventure was back then. Back then was my dissertation defense. All right, all right. Enough family history. Have you always wanted to be a shipyard engineer? No, not always. When I was 15, I wanted to be a statistician. You know, a nice, quiet life alone in an ivory tower. Was, that was my personal. That was what my personal dropship was going to be called. Preparing mathematical models and studying survey results. So, yeah, you know, every girl's dream. I guess. Didn't you ever want to do anything, I don't know, exciting? Like being a McGuire? No. As much as I love the idea of stomping around in a giant robot, I'm not a huge fan of the whole murdering people with lasers thing. It doesn't really square with my personal beliefs. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to work with McGuire's. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be here. But the actual firing of weapons, no. It isn't for me. Seemed pretty... Uh, pretty enthusiastic about it. Why didn't you follow through? I'm being a statistician. Well, interest change. Well, I mean, I still like statistics, but it's really more of a hobby now. Is that weird? People have told me that's weird. I don't know. Plotting graphs and forecasting future events calms me. It's like my own personal little way of using math to bring order from chaos. And besides, everybody needs a hobby. I know for a fact that Darius crochets. Okay, so um, what made you want to get into engineering? Uncle Heiner's Experiment World, live action STEM entertainment program from the Leonard Commonwealth. It started airing just after my 19th birthday. You may have seen it. It ran for three seasons before it was cancelled. The host was a tattooed, chance smoking nihilist who taught children the magic of chemistry. You know, like making thermite in a with aluminum cans and a pelt sander. That kind of thing. Yeah, I remember. You liked that guy? I married him. Long story. But the important bit is... In the six months before the annulment, I learned that I had a real talent with machines. When Heiner blew out the power relay and took an iron to the bandsaw, I was the one who put it back together again. I found out a great deal, great deal of peace in that. From there, it was just a matter of getting into the right schools and following my bliss. So that's what I did, and well, here I am. Turned out all, well, all right for me, all things considered. Can we discuss something work-related? We're done here. Talk to you later, Doc. See you later. Ah, Sumire. Let's see How what you I got. Help, Commander? What do you think of the Argo? Are you going to be able to fly this beast? She's been flying it for the past several weeks, but whatever. She's different. Piloting her wouldn't be a problem, but I can't say I'm happy living on board a piece of Lost Deck. Too many question marks for my taste. With that said, I get the necessity. The leopard is just too damn small. Anyway, as long as we're able to restrain ourselves from pushing any mer mysterious buttons, we should be okay. That's what I keep telling myself, anyway. Life aboard the Argo should continue to improve as Dr. Murad brings new sections of the ship online. So we've got that to look forward to. The ship has got potential, I'll give her that. Yeah, and I can't wait to see how she develops over time. Personally, I'm rooting for a day spa, but I'm easy. I'll take what I can get. Uh, that's about it. Yep, just the tutorial stuff. Alrighty, we've actually managed to get through all of that without, I suppose, too much time being spent. So... 
to the mech warriors in the command bay. I forgot to do this, but I know what I want to do with Medusa now. Standing by. Medusa is going to be a gunnery piloting expert. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to be converting that Shadowhawk to have an AC-20. The AC-20 is super short range, so I want somebody who's nimble, fast, and able to, you know, do stuff. So having a plus one to his evasion, well, we saw what tanking evasion could do when Decker did it, and he managed to tank an entire SRM carrier. So we're going gunnery piloting. Yep, confirming that specialty in there. Complete. And he is a one away from getting breaching shot, which will really be a boon to an AC-20, because 100 damage that ignores cover and guarded. That, that's going to be fun. Uh, for anything else? No, I'm going to save. We're going to save for breaching shot, because we're getting that we're getting that AC-20 soon. Uh, for us, we need 3600 to get down our next tree for guts and gunnery. We could go up piloting a bit. That's a higher ma base melee to hit, and we actually do have a pretty decent weapon for it. Eh, no, I'm going to keep saving. Going to keep saving so we can go higher up in the guts or the gunnery tree. Uh, Behemoth is the same deal. She's saving for her higher levels. Yes, Decker is also saving for his higher level. Also, he can't afford anything at this point. Well, he could get guts, which would give him a bonus to recoil penalty, but he doesn't have any weapons that recoil right now. Commander. And Glitch, sorry, I've, I've really got to bring you out sometime soon. She's already set for gunnery. Probably going to go... I need a guts tactics person. May have to hire somebody on, but I'm not going to do that quite yet until the trebuchet is done. Anyway, let's go to contracts. We're taking a nice, quick, and easy contract. Intelligence agent, negotiate. We're going to go 418, because the amount of cash we're getting for this job, even if we go full, is just ridiculously bad. Let's let's hope we get a whole bunch of cool salvage. We're not going to be able to do much with that salvage, but it should be fine. Oh, yeah, the quick draw's out for two more days. Ooh, don't want to do that. Back, back, back. I got too enthusiastic. Nope. Argo. See him at the clock. One day. Thank you. And command center contracts. Thank you. Negotiate. Give me all that salvage. Thank you. There we go. Everybody's in their proper mix. We are technically a match for guts now. Wait, no. She's got better tactics than we do. Which doesn't matter because it's an indirect fire penalty bonus. Oh. Uh, Actually, no. That's a minimum range bonus, isn't it? Ooh. In that case, the Centurion is a better mech for her. Yeah, we're going to switch. Because the Centurion's AC5, if it gets too close, then it becomes horrifically inaccurate. But with her level 5 tactics, I'm pretty sure that gives her minus 45 range, uh, minus 45 to her minimum range, which will make the AC5 better. So put us in our quick draw now, which is going to be fun. We've had to give up Daddy's old ride. But that should work out relatively well. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. We are mixing things up just a little bit, which could end badly. But I'm hoping it doesn't. We may switch back to the Centurion just because it's nostalgia. One of our covert operatives was captured by a local government patrol during a routine data drop and is being held at a secure facility in Kimmy. This name is always amusing to me. We will need a rapid response team to raid the facility and get our oper operative out safety. safely. We will pay a bonus if you are able to secure the data that she was trying to deliver. As well, it's being... Wow, that was weird. Data as well. It's being held in a separate facility, so we'll have to look around. There shouldn't be any surprises here, Commander. The target is expecting a pickup, so she'll be aboard in a matter of moments. The data might be tougher, but it's your call if you want to go in after it. I think we will. Command interface yeah, maybe initiated. not. We're only getting... It'll, it'll increase the contract by a percentage. Which, of a percentage of 20,000, is not much. So get into these evac zone and get the hell out. Okay. You got it. Where is that secondary data? If it's on the way, I will take it. And... Oh, it's on the way. Okay, no problem here. We're gonna go for it. Orders. Decker, you're up. Not sure that's wise. Me, let's walk forward. Let's be aggressive. Got to get all these mechs rolling on forward here. Aye, aye. The Shadowhawk bringing up the rear. Moving out. Oh, I'm really tempted to just jump in on him. If I go up here, can't get down without jumping, which is not grand. I yeah, will follow up. May as well. There's no reason not to at this point. We can always hop behind a rock if all hell breaks loose. So, surprise, little prison! We brought a battle mech lance. As opposed to an Omni, Omni Mac Lance, but uh, we don't have access to those just yet. Give the modders some time, though. I'm already hearing about people modding in Mad Cats and stuff. 
I mean, I haven't seen one do it yet, but they're saying that they're able to do things like rip from MechWarrior Online. And, which, to be fair, these models are also from MechWarrior Online. Enemy contact, Enemy two battle mechs, long range, unknown type. All right, so we've got one more turn to get in on this action. Shadowhawk needs to be up close because the Shadowhawk has a lot of firepower that only works in close range, which also is an issue with the Centurion. Oh, that's another reason why I may stay in the Centurion because having Behemoth's portrait come up whenever I order something like that is a little weird. Sprint for five and in cover. Also puts you in a position to jump jet on top of something. Run around on the corner like a boss. Really like this fire starter. Oh, I'm such a fan of it. All right, we've got two light mechs. Who, what were you? You commando? I think I saw a commando. Reserve decker. Let's find out exactly what we're dealing with. Locust or commando? It's a commando. I like commandos. They're cool mechs. Firing into us. Ooh, hit us once on the shoulder, but the other one missed entirely. That's just fine. We're going to stomp on in here and uh, give him a taste. Ooh, third and battle mech. Enemies detected. Third light battle mech. Locust. Alright, what you going to do? You got missiles? You do have missiles. Oh, that is much more accurate than we were planning. I'm going to have to get in here tight and fast. Four battle mechs. That's a large laser. That's a commando for sure. There's a commando variant that has a large laser on his wrist. So we're going to march on in there and punch him in the face. And by punch him in the face, I mean shoot him with heavy weapons. Oh, we have a fifth mech coming in. It's starting to feel like a bit of a trap. Is there a sixth light mech? No, we've got five enemy light mechs. Okay. Let's see if we can't take him down every turn. What's up, boss? Your jump is not going to be give me in a range of anything, is it? Jump, please. I can shoot you, but I'll be exposed to two other mechs. I will be fast, but you've got four points of evasion as well, so you're also fast. So I think we got to get in here tight with him and hit him hard. Yes, Commander. So you've got two points of evasion. You've got probably two, three points of evasion. You've got a large laser. You've got a missile launcher. I don't know what you have. I'd like to avoid knowing what you have for a little while. Waiting for orders. Is he in your scanner range, Decker? He's not. So we are going to have to get closer regardless. We move here. Still keeps him out of scanner range. I want to sensor lock this one and uh, be able to take him down from being able to stop us from doing what we want to do. But that may not be something we can Standing get by. done. It's going to be your only shot. It's 40s and 60s. Centurion does bake a little bit, and this is a desert terrain, so we are going to have to worry about that. I'll take the precision strike on the commando. Moving out. Because we're going to have morale right now. And the biggest, the biggest advantage that they have is that they have evasion, which precision strike strips away from them completely. Oh, good. So they are ramshackle. They have no armor, basically. Ten points of armor, that's nothing. So you should actually be able to core him out. 50? Yeah, you get two hits on him and he's dead. Sharks exposed, and that's enough. Center torso. Okay, we've gone down by one. I don't need I commandos. Need salvage there. They're cool, Max. I like them, but I don't need it. We are going to try and salvage that large laser at some point, though. So how are you doing? Morale is 36, which yeah. is not enough to buy another point. Get you here. I'm looking at two of them, which I don't know type. If I move you over here, yeah, that's not going to work for me so great. Let's get the Shadowhawk up and get him facing towards the enemy. Got it. If we get the Shadowhawk within range to punch somebody, he'll be able to really get some work done. So we got another Locust. It's a Locust 1M and a Commando. So we got two Locust 1Ms. Don't know what this Commando's got, but he's got a large laser. So obviously, ooh. 60% chance to hit him, which might core him out, because he's got basically nothing. He's ramshackle, and need to do 50 damage to his center torso, but accuracy ain't exactly great. We're going to pump it into you, and the main reason why we're doing this is because I want to get Decker to target lock this guy, if at all possible. Right arm, right torso, pilot injured, didn't kill it, but pretty savagely mauled it. 
standing by. All right, Dagger, is there any position I can get you in which tells me... Is there a position I can jump you into? Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So we'll jump Decker over here. This will keep him fast, nimble. We'll target lock the uh, commando. That'll leave him open for the quick draw to finish him off. Sensor lock. Take you out of the fight. And our turn again as we come up. And we are here to play, my friends. Really a multi... Eh, Multi-target would not go awry here. Because if we multi-target, I could put w the one shell that I need to into him to kill him. That's not a bad plan, actually. What do you got in your center torso? Two SRM hits. Yeah, we're going to go multi-target. Your primary, your secondary. So the SRMs are going into him. And the lasers are going into him. Engaging multiple targets. One miss. Uh, didn't hit what I needed to. I really kind of needed to do two torso hits on that one. But he is back in initiative phase, so Decker might be able to get in there and kill him. Enemy mech destroyed. Excellent show. So we've taken out both of the locusts. Which, to be fair, a locust is not exactly a big deal. They are pretty weak mechs. I mean, his missiles are going to be annoying. You have LRMs? Really? Minus one evasion. Yeah, that's fine. Commander. Decker, I need you to keep jumping like a fool. Face in this direction. It's only going to be the medium lasers, unfortunately. If I jump here, will I have everything? Nope, I'm, I'm just out of range for that. So I'm going to jump here. Give me a little bit more off. defense on that. We'll pray that the medium lasers... Agents on our way out, okay. So we are securing the area. Bl Ooh, precision strike, got to use that. Core me out of torso, I just need one roll in that in that center torso. Engaging He's dead. target. Nope, you decided to hit his right torso, but that caused the CT explosion because the SRM That's ammo killed. blew up. All right, that works. Required a little bit of uh, investment on that, but that's more than okay. Got another mech coming from our stern. That's a problem. Oh, that's a big problem, actually, because these missiles... Missiles roll a lot of times. Decker's taking some hits to the back. We gotta we gotta resolve Damage that now. Is minor, Commander. Understood. And a Jenner. Okay. We walked into this one a bit. Got a lot of mechs converging on our location now. Fire starter. Okay. Firing his lasers. Don't think that hit. No, that didn't hit. All right. Here's what we're gonna do. Commander. I want to get in range of that. Ready for orders. Okay. So I can walk within range of it. And if I step right here, I will be in range of you as well. And I think that'll be fine. No, nah, not quite there. Well, there. Does that put me in? Do you have to knock down this building? 30% chance to hit. I'd like to focus down that Jenner. Is anybody going to move next? No, it's just me. We are reserved down. Holding for the right opportunity. All right. Yeah, we're holding for the right opportunity because of this. If I do this, my quick draw can't do anything useful this turn. If I do this, my quick draw can do something very useful this turn. Receiving you. Oh, that decision that we always pick of not uh, of not taking long range missiles is now backfiring because I just need one little plink on him to take away some uh, this this guy's defense. I don't really have a shot at him. Come here. What are we looking at? We're looking at a single shot with the auto cannon, aren't we? Yeah. It's just not good enough. Look at a really good sh Oh, no, that's, that's the building, not the mech. Can't see him from there. Need to step in the circle. That's a problem. <laughs> uh. Okay, we're going to take a turn to do this. Yeah, it's not optimal because the Jenner is a bigger target. It's a better target. 
but this will put us in range to start taking this objective. And we're going to lay into a little locust with everything we've got. All weapons committed. Structure exposed, and I think... Yeah, we got him. Set a torso, pilot. Enemy mech destroyed. That gives us an inspiration point to deal with other things. Waiting for orders. Okay, we gotta worry about a fire starter. They're very mobile and very dangerous. If I move up here, can I follow this up? Good to go. I really can't. Behemoth is committed to fighting this, fighting this locust up top here. Unfortunately. Move order. So we'll get the centurion there. We're gonna take a bad shot. It's not good. So I'm not gonna, even gonna bother wasting. Well, I could. It's only a locust, so if I... No, he's got 50 health in the center? He's got 32. If we get a good shot on this, he's dead. So a 70% chance, and then a center torso. Good job, behemoth! That's a kill. Slotted him with one shell. Nice. Nice work. And now Medusa's up, and Medusa is going to walk on up here. Medusa is just going to lay everything he's got into him. How's this? 60s and 65? That's better. We're going to do that. Coordinates received. Get on up here and just slam him. All weapons. Uh, how are you? Ho ho. You are vulnerable. I know I'm using Precision Strike a lot on this, and it does make the game probably a bit too easy, but... All weapons are go. We are pretty badly unnumbered. We hit the center torso with the missile, how I wanted. Unfortunately, we didn't kill him. Solid connection on that one. Next shell will probably kill him. The asset has been secured, and is Good. ready for retrieval. So... Must get to the evac zone with four units. Receiving you. Hi, Decker. Um... Either way, this fire starter goes next. I can't get within range of him. If I jump, I can. Tell me what his weapons are. Okay, so he's basically me. High deal, 40, 90 damage with my flamers, or with my uh, lasers. This would be incredibly aggressive to do. Some might even say foolish to do. But Decker Jumping. is a man of skill and aggression. So let's rock it, Decker. Everything you've got, oh, we're looking at overheat. Flamers are neutral. Oh no. Oh no. That's not going to be enough. He's exposed, plus 40 heat, but that's, that's not going to be enough. Oh no, Decker. Oh no. If he's smart, he punches Decker. If he's less than smart, he'll shoot Decker. If he's even less than smart, he'll shoot the Shadowhawk. And I get to move next now, which means I can walk up and punch the Shadowhawk, or this Jenner, before he can do anything. Hi, Medusa. Hi, hi. Uh, can you punch? No, you're not quite within range to punch. Here, uh, 35% chance. If I just shoot him from here, 80s all around. So, yeah. We'll cut him open. Unsteady. That's not what I needed. I needed something more than that. Here he comes a walking. He's got a decent number of lasers, I believe. One, two, three, four. Yep, four lasers. Didn't get a super number of hits. He didn't expose the structure, I don't think. Orders. Yeah, Behemoth, I think you can finish him off. 45s. Why is the accuracy so bad? Shooting him from here, what do you got? Huh. He's only got one point of evasion right now. Not quite sure why that would cause so many problems. 
So we're looking at 45s across the board. Here is 50s. So we're going to go here, and we're just going to hope that we can do enough damage with the SRMs. Because the SRMs are amazing. And I rely probably too heavily on them. Targeting for an alpha strike. Seven stars, so good job. Just one. One is all that was needed. Enemy down. Thank you. Alrighty. So, I think, yeah, now it's just march up on in here and kill him. So we gotta get out of here now. It's, it's running time. But I think we're gonna try and kill this last mech on our way out. So we've got one more objective to accomplish. And of course we're gonna go for a pre precision strike on this one. And I need to shut off some stuff. Yeah, one laser. The least accurate laser. If I want to blow him to pieces, I just go for the center torso shot. Fire away. Really, I'm just doing this for the accuracy buff. I don't even really care where I hit you just because I've got enough to do that. Ammo explosion. Enemy mech. Critical damage detected. It'll also knock him back on stage, and which allowed Decker to come in from behind. What? We've got a PPC, huh? Incoming PPC fire from way over here. What do we got? I don't have sensors on that. Ready for orders. Yeah, Decker, um, punch. Moving out. Let's walk up to him and uh, say goodnight. Uh! And the torso destroyed. Put a fist right through him. And then just for the giggles. Oh, yeah. You're not getting out of that one. Decker is a savage. Our phase. There's nothing in radar range, is there? Let's get on the move, because I don't see anything, and that worries me. Yes, Commander. Up to sprinting speed. We're gone. Confirmed. Get that Centurion out of here. Mech carrying the data must survive, which is the quick draw. <laughs> oh, that's not a bad mech to have carrying data. Sprint. We are gone because I don't see this mech that has a PPC, but he's fired at me. Might not be a mech, but it did go last. And that worries me. Also makes me kind of like, hmm, if it's a heavy mech, we did take a lot of... We did take a lot of salvage on this mission. Which is kind of a waste, but a heavy mech. So, come on, come on. Enemy round. There he is, okay. Got a mech incoming. Good to go. I want to see him. Wait, no. Why would I do that? That would be foolish of me. Decker, you're going to walk back here. For obvious reasons. Uh, and sensor lock him. That'll keep you in range. Yep. Heading out. So this guy's moving last. Which tells me he's either a heavy or an assault mech. But he only fired one PPC, which eh, doesn't really jive with that. Show me what I've got. Sensors locked on. Are you a what now? Vindicator? That's a panther. Oh, okay. We'll do it for the Ready PPC. For uh, so we will reserve for one round. Me. Can I get line of sight on him? I can't. Crap. I wanted to get a line of sight, but it looks like only the autocannons are going to be able to shoot. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be autocannon fire here. Moving. Which might be able to do it. I mean, it's entirely possible it'll be enough to damage him. He actually wins a long-range engagement because he's got, you know, a weapon that hits for 50 Target damage. Confirmed. Structure exposed. Not quite the structure I wanted. Medusa. Yep. Let's get you in this fight. Medusa's looking at uh, also an 85% accuracy shot here. On my way. If I can get, keep the quick draw moving towards the exit, that'll be fine. 
because uh, he will be able to not have to waste his time doing this. Blow up that torso. He's got what, an SRM on it? Uh, who cares? Fire! Center torso hit. Okay. And now us. Oh, we keep on uh, marching. Don't want to lose this data. Full throttle. Also, it'll chill us out in case the worst happens and we have to turn around and actually engage. We'll be nice and cool for it. Plus one morale. AI is thinking. AI is moving. How fast did the panther move? You gonna shoot? He's gonna shoot! Ooh. Managed to hit. Minus one evasion. Oh, they don't like me at all. Didn't get through the armor, I don't think. That's good. Uh, Decker. Commander. Would you like to jump out of nowhere and light him on fire? I think you would. Yes, you would. So jump I out of me. nowhere. Whoosh. Turn the heavy weapons on. Hi. My name's Decker. I'm precision striking you with close combat weaponry. Got it. And flamethrowers. Boom. Tango down. And that's how we do that. Yep, that was everybody. Sumire's Mission coming in for an easy out. I don't think they penetrated the Shadowhawk's armor. It hit, but I don't think it got through. Fingers crossed. Otherwise, Shadowhawk's going to be in repairs for a couple of days, and that'll be somewhat annoying. Alrighty, so payment contract increased by 30% since the fact that we saved the data. We keep doing things for House of Al, which is, uh, which is a little bit weird, because we're a scion of Davian. <laughs> the Firestarter picked up three mech kills, as did the Centurion. Nice job. Let's steal all the cool stuff. Um, I could build another Locust. Uh, I want a large laser, thank you. Medium lasers, no. PPCs, heat sink. Yeah, the PPC. Thank you. I think I'm going to grab the Commando 1B. We don't have one, right? Oh, there were multiple large lasers? Ooh, that's better. Yeah, not going to lie. Multiple large lasers is a better pickup. And I'm not seeing anything worth our time. So yeah, we'll pick up two large lasers. They're not useful now, but hey, there's a weapon rebalance coming. And we'll pit, take a Commando 1B. Not that it's super useful right now, but eh, we've got on. Confirm that. And we got enough parts to build a Locust. Yay. And some jump jets and heat sinks. Actually, I think I'm going to scrap the Locust. It, it's not useful to us. We already have a Locust in reserve that we already put in reserve. Although it is a Locust 1M. Which which has missile launchers, whereas our, our Locust did not. So it might be worth keeping. Uh, Lady Rano's contract delivered. House Decimus is around. Yeah, thanks. Mech is ready to fight, Commander. Locust 1M model is, an interest, is interesting in that it can churn out a decent volley of LRMs for such a small mech. It's a great harasser, especially if you use its speed to lob missiles onto weaker rear armor of targets. But normally, it has almost no armor itself. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're putting you in salvage. Well, in storage. Send to, to storage, please. Uh, we have another eight days before we can start managing more stuff. So nice, easy mission. Picking up a little bit of the cash. Picking up quite a bit of weaponry, honestly. Uh, we are probably still going to wait around because I don't quite want to do a contract for mission. Yeah, we got we got more fun stuff. That just came up. So a letter of mark would be nice. So a priority mission just came up. We might do a travel contract. It's 18 days. That will allow us to get a lot done, actually. That's going to do it for today's episode. We managed to get through some people's backstories and did a nice little uh, smash and grab operation. Very successful. Anyway, I've been T-Rack. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to see the notification every time I release one of these videos, press that little bell icon leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next episode.